Hello there fans, welcome back to the Hyperspace Database. I'm Jonesy, your Mandalorian here with today's topic. What exactly is hyperspace and how does it work? Hyperspace is seen all throughout Star Wars, in the movies, TV shows, video games, comics, you name it, it's there. It's the main avenue by which beings could travel through the galaxy at light speed, making space travel across the wide galaxy possible while not taking light years to accomplish. If we were to answer the question in one too long didn't read summary, the biggest defining feature of hyperspace is that it is a parallel dimension to real space, or subspace as it is also called. So when ships jump to hyperspace using faster than light speed with a hyperdrive engine, they are actually jumping into and through an alternate dimension of space-time. Okay, let's break it down a bit. Maps of the Star Wars galaxy lay out what are called hyperspace lanes, which are basically navigation paths that allow for safe travel through hyperspace without crashing into planets and stars. Now, you might be asking, if hyperspace is actually another dimension, why would pilots need to worry about running into planets in real space? The short answer is that these planetary bodies in subspace have what we call a shadow in hyperspace, basically meaning that they have a physical counterpart that you could still run into. These mass shadows, or gravity wells, around a celestial body could trap a ship traveling in hyperspace. And if it were the mass shadow of a black hole or a star, this could prove fatal, as it could be stuck in their gravity and not be able to escape its pull. That's why navigation computers were so essential to the Star Wars galaxy, as there was an incredible risk of flying right into a planet without these calculated highways, or colliding with a planet's gravitational pull, or mass shadow, which could easily disrupt a hyperdrive and pull a ship out of hyperspace back into real space. This was actually shown several times in the Star Wars universe with the development of the Imperial Interdictor Star Destroyer, which used artificial gravity projectors to trip a ship's safety feature and prevent ships from jumping to hyperspace. And a pilot would have to be fairly crazy to jump without navigation coordinates, because the odds of traveling at light speed blindly without flying through a planet were, well... Never tell me the odds. You get the idea. This exact topic is discussed between Han and Luke in A New Hope, when they are escaping from a Star Destroyer in orbit, where Han says that without precise calculations, they could easily fly right through a planet or bounce too close to a supernova. There are a few instances that we see in the sequel trilogy that seem to ignore this fact as far as hyperspace and light speed are concerned. The first example is when Han, Chewie, and Finn use light speed to land on Ilum, the location of Starkiller Base, in The Force Awakens. The nav computer would normally kick you out of light speed when you hit the planet's gravity, giving you time to recover and make course corrections. But the process of making a phenomenally precise jump into the planet's atmosphere and recovering before you plowed through the planet's surface traveling at light speed, well, that's something else entirely. The second instance of breaking the hyperspace light speed system is light speed skipping. To be fair, there are many instances in the Star Wars universe where blind micro-jumps happen, which is when a ship goes into hyperspace for a split second, then drops out right away. But even these are extremely risky, as you're still traveling at light speed blindly. The light speed skipping technique is not only risky, but it is also just plain ridiculous, given what we know of hyperspace, as there would be no way that you could drop in and out randomly without running into anything. Even in the movie when they skip several times, you can see there are objects in front of them when they skip ahead, that they easily would have crashed into. This can be used to an advantage, however, as it was seen in The Rise of Skywalker, when Admiral Holdo used this maneuver to take out Supreme Leader Snoke's supremacy with a suicidal, blind hyperspace jump. However, one would question how a ship with no fuel was able to accelerate to light speed in the first place, let alone if the supremacy had shields that were active at the time. But I guess that is left up to the creative teams that make the films to explain away. Now, you might be asking, if these hyperspace lanes existed, how were they able to travel from planet to planet that aren't in a straight line? Well, much like an airplane that has a layover, or several, hyperspace travel often required a ship to drop out of hyperspace at a certain point during the journey, realign themselves with the next navigation point, type in those coordinates into the computer, and then jump again, kind of making it a start-stop kind of travel for out-of-the-way planets. Most of the time, a hyperspace lane was charted for easy access between heavily populated commercial planets that directly influenced the trade and economic development of the galaxy. So you wouldn't have many hyperspace lanes that would take you directly from Tatooine to Dagobah, for example, but from Coruscant to Corellia, you bet. Another reason why these hyperspace lanes went near populated planets was for the safety of the ships that were traveling through hyperspace. 
If a ship was to have a catastrophic malfunction and needed major repairs, it would be pretty unfortunate if they were stranded in the middle of space that wasn't anywhere near an inhabited planet. That being said, there were times that it did happen, and it was more common than you would think. So, many ships were equipped with advanced communications equipment in case of emergencies, so that they could signal for help or contact a local government to send help to them. Prior to the advancement of navigation computers, there were stationary objects called nav buoys that ships could lock onto and use as waypoints to jump from system to system. Though as technology advanced, this type of navigation was integrated into the nav computer and fell out of practical use. Interestingly, nav computers needed to be frequently updated because hyperspace lanes changed as planets and stars moved around the galaxy. And this might even lead to some hyperlanes being abandoned completely in favor of a new, shorter access route. Can you see the importance of these hyperspace lanes? There was a time called the Great Hyperspace Rush in which much of the galaxy was unmapped. And it was found that whoever controlled these hyperspace routes could control travel and shipping, allowing them to become insanely powerful with large organizations that sought to have exclusive control on these routes. Therefore, a surge of explorers and cartographers rushed out to chart the space lanes and sell them to the highest bidder. The Republic eventually made access to these routes public, and access to secret hyperspace routes became pretty rare and even more valuable for those that had them. Here's a fun fact for you. When the Empire was building the first Death Star, they used a secret hyperspace lane that was known only to them, which prevented the Rebellion or any other outside third party from accidentally stumbling onto the station while it was being constructed. There's quite a bit about hyperspace that still remains a mystery in the Star Wars universe, and this is just a summary of what we know so far, and it may be possible that we get a more detailed explanation of how all this works in later projects. However, it may just remain a mystery, as there are quite a few head-scratching elements to it that we are just left to wonder about. For example, one of the most interesting and puzzling aspects of hyperspace comes in the Rebels TV show, where it is discovered that the alien Pergil species could travel through hyperspace on their own, without outside technical assistance. Hera Syndulla says that she had heard stories about the Purgle when she was younger, and had heard that they inspired others to discover the mysteries of hyperspace, but she remained skeptical of the whole thing. That is, until she saw it in action herself. Hyperspace remains a mystery in more aspects than one, but it was solidly the prime way of travel in that galaxy far, far away. And say what you will, there is something particularly special about seeing those stars stretch out and vanish as the ships travel through that mesmerizing, spiraling tunnel of light that we all know and love. Want to know more about great Star Wars topics like this one? Be sure to check out my other videos on my channel, hit those like and subscribe buttons, and the bell to be notified every time I publish a new video. Be sure to select all notifications there so you're notified every time I publish something new. Be sure to chat with me in the comments too because I really love talking to you guys. Thank you so much for watching this episode and I'll see you in the next one.